Cronaro V zero nine zero back here with another video today and in today's video this is my Cronaro Southern Sharks twenty twenty one season preview. Uh so look obviously now probably since twenty fifteen to maybe present now in um you know twenty twenty one but uh you know the Sharks have been a really consistent finals team they've always made the finals each year you know there's been years where uh you know fans have been riding off the Sharks and saying that. It's this is the year that they're going to finally going to fall out of the top eight, but it's never happened. The Sharks have always remained a consistent top eight team, and you know they've always done it off the back of a, of a really solid squad, such as guys like Josh Dugan, who's a real leader, and when he's injury free, Josh Dugan can be a great player. So is Matt Moylan. You know when he's injury free as well, he'd be a, another great player. And for Feeder, when he's uh, again not injured and when he's consistent, he can be a great player too, a great front rower. People forget to uh, think it as as. Uh, Wade Graham, a great leader. You know, they've got guys like Sean Johnson, Chad Townsend, and Halves. Very good, very good Halves combination, but unfortunate that they weren't at the, at the Sharks. We will be missing Sean Johnson for at least their first eight or six rounds, so that's a little bit tough there. But, you know, the Sharks have been a really good team over the last five or six years now, and I think Sharks are, you know, they've got a really decent squad, but I'm not, sh I'm not sure if they're going to go much further than that with a decent squad. I'm not sure if they're going to you know, do much this year with the squad, but I'll go through um, reasons re reasons why I don't really see them making the eight this year, but I think they do have a pretty good team. They can do some good things if they can remain consistent. But let's get into the season preview. So this is my team I pick with everyone at full strength, so injuries don't count, and just uh, my team at full strength. So at fullback, Matt Moylan. The wingers are Sione Katoa and Ronaldo Molotalo. The centers are Josh Dugan and Jesse Raymond. The halves are Sean Johnson and Chad Townsend. The props are Andrew Fafita and Aaron Woods. The hookers Blake Bla uh, Blake Braley. Uh, the back rows are Brendan Cora and the captain Wade Graham. And lock is Billy McGulius. And off the bench, 14, Sasifa Talakai. Talakai. Uh, 15, Toby Rudolph. 16, Aiden Tolman. 17, Brad hamlin -Ueli. And the coach, John Morris. So that's my team I named right there. Not a bad team, actually. I think it's... You know, a really, really good team, but a bit of an underrated sort of team when they're all, you know, injury-free and all playing consistent. But, yeah, look, I don't know. It's a good team, but just need to keep consistent and keep injury-free. I think that's some of the big worries for the Sharks. You know, got some good players there, but they always get the injuries, unfortunately, for them. So, but if this team can remain, you know, injury-free and, you know, can remain consistent, I think they're going to be definitely looking for a top eight spot for sure, even higher than a top eight spot. You know, they can uh, get, it, get it all right. Uh, here's the Sharks' depth he heading to 2021 as well. So, so this is their depth. Uh, Brayden Trindle, Connor Tracy, uh, Jack A. Williams, not the actual Jack Williams, but there's another one called Jack A. Williams. And the real one, Jack Williams, I've have it, I have it in reserve as well, the real Jack Williams. But, but there's another one called Jack A. Williams, just to, cl to clarify quickly. Uh, Jackson Ferris, J Jensen uh, Tomo, Tomo Pau. Uh, sorry, how you, however you say it. Uh, Janaya Lua Lua Lua, uh, Luke Medcalf, Mawini Harodi, uh, Nene McDonald, William Kennedy, Daniel Vasquez, Franklin Pele, Jack Martin, Cole Patterson, Royce Hunt, and Teague Wilson. And that's the Sharks' depth right there for 2021. I think depth is actually pretty good for the Sharks. I, I think they have no problems. I think they've got many positions covered in terms of their depth. So I think Sharks will go right in terms of depth. And I think that, you know. Death is not a problem for the Sharks heading to 2021, I believe. So, yeah, they, they look good in that area. Uh, so, here's some of their strengths in 2021 for mine. So, one strength is a lot of rep players they have. I think that's a good thing that Sharks have, like, a lot of rep players in that uh, team they have. And uh, the, another strength for 2021 for the Sharks is uh, their leaders. they got, like, a lot of leadership there, a lot of experience. So, you know, the rep players, for example, this is the first uh, strength for, for mine. Matt Moylan used to be a, um, a representative player, but unfortunately he has lost it because of injuries. Uh, but, you know, the current rep players like Wade Graham, you know, Brendan Cora is considered one for New Zealand. Uh, Andrew Fafita is a rep player for Tonga. Uh, Sean Johnson is a rep player for New Zealand. Um, Will Tyler is a rep player for uh, Samoa. Um, you know, and they've, and they've got like a lot of experience in that team. I think it's a really good thing that Sharks have a, this amount of experience. You know, I think they've got a good roster, you know, that has a lot of players that have been through it before, a lot of players that know what they're doing. Some very, uh, very, a lot of footy minds in that team and a lot of, uh, yeah, really, really smart players in that side. And I think that, you know, that's a good positive and strength for the Sharks in 2021. 
Uh, and I like a lot of leadership as well. I mean, Wiley Graham is a pretty good leader, uh, in my opinion. Billy McGooley's for a young kid. I've seen a lot of interviews from Billy McGooley's. He's a really, really good talker, good leader as well. So I think he he is de definitely considered a good up and coming leader for mine. Andrew Fafita Andrew is sort of a leader. I mean, he's experienced, been at the Sharks for a long time. So I guess he's some sort of leader at the club as well. Aaron Woods is a leader. I mean, Woods is a bit. Getting, getting, getting on with age now, but he's still leader. He's still experienced. He's been there, pl been playing for over or nearly over ten years, or I think he has been playing over ten years for uh, now. Aaron Woods, so he's a, he's a leader, I think. Uh, Josh Dugan's a leader. Matt Warren's a leader, and and Chad Townsend, Sean Johnson, all leaders. They got like a lot of good leadership in that team. A lot of good, a lot of uh, good, um, a lot of good leadership in there. A lot of good uh, people and players that can uh, definitely steer this team to success. Um, now their best uh, weaknesses. Sorry, so this 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 is some of uh, shark weak, sharks weaknesses heading into twenty twenty one. In my opinion, uh, one of them is consistency, and the other one is injuries to key players. So obviously with the consistency, uh, sharks would often last you win by thirty by thirty points, and then the next week lose by about forty or, or uh, twenty points. You know, often often the sharks have a big win, then the next week have a big loss, and often after that week after they have the big loss, they have another big win, and then after the big win, have another big loss. That's just the story of the Sharks for the last couple of years now, and um, I think John Morris, the coach himself, really needs to fix, really needs to fix that, or, or else it's not going to look good for the Sharks. You mean, I mean, Sharks are a team that can score points, of course. They've got a lot, a lot of uh, attacking options, and uh, the Sharks seem to know uh, how things can go, but the the consistency seems to be a real prob a real problem there. I mean, the consistency of the Sharks is just not on. They're a very inconsistent side. I don't know if they'll change that in twenty twenty one. I mean, hopefully they do, but. Yeah, again, consistency is something that really need to change in 2021. I think they need to be a bit more of a consistent side and, um, you know, be less inconsistent because I think that when they're inconsistent, they don't look really that good and they uh, often look a little bit uh, surprising because from the week before they've had a big win and then the next week they look really bad, which is a bit surprising. So consistency is a big problem for the Sharks, in my opinion. And injuries, you know, injuries to key players, like I was saying before, Matt Moylan, great player, but, but always gets injured with his hamstrings. And, you know, Matt Moylan is a former Australian New South Wales player. I mean, you know, he was playing for his country, for his state back then, but now injuries have pushed his career almost. And hopefully, Matt, we, we see the best of Matty Moylan this year. Exact same situation with Josh Dugan. I mean, Josh Dugan, he played for Australia and New South Wales, and he was just a great player back in back in a couple of years ago. And now it just injuries, you know, and you know he just become this not the same player. I don't think he's been the same player since those injuries, to be honest. And uh, I mean, he had a good year last year, but you know he's he's never been really talked into uh, representing his country or state since probably 2017, 2016, unfortunately. So Dugan is a great player, but his injuries are not good either. Sean Johnson's got a really bad Achilles injury, and which I was saying he'll probably miss the first eight eight rounds. And then you know guys like yeah Johnson gets injured quite a bit. Andrew Fafita gets his knees are almost busted. He lost a lot. Andrew Fafita lost a lot of weight in the off season, so that's good for him. But yeah, look again, the Sharks have a lot of injuries, have a lot of problems. Uh, I mean maybe they're going to change some things in terms of, in terms of how some players train. I'm not sure, but. Injuries are definitely a problem for the Sharks. So let's hope the injury luck can definitely be better for them in 2021. Their best signing for 2021. Now, the Sharks haven't really made any big signings. I mean, they're, they're, their recruitment's probably been the worst, in my opinion. Uh, the only two signings they made this preseason are Aiden Tom from the Bulldogs, and the second one's uh, Luke Metcalf from Manly. And I'd say the only best sign for them is Luke Metcalf. I think, even though Luke Metcalf has played no games yet, He's still a freak of a play. He's obviously shown in the trial matches and in uh, Perth Nines and all that. He's got a lot of potential, a lot of speed, a bit like another Matt Duffy, a lot of speed, a lot of uh, good attacking uh, in him, and a lot of um, good goods about him. He seems like a really solid fullback and can play in the halves as well. So Metcalf's obviously a loss for Manly, but you know he actually played for the Sharks originally back in 2017-16 in the lower grades before he joined Manly in 2018. So, and then he goes back to his... Uh, uh, first club he was ever at, the Sharks in 2021. So let's see if Luke Metcalf can get a debut in 2021. I hope he does. Great player. I think he's their best sign. I mean, Aiden Tolman's good, but he, what's, I don't think he's going to bring much, to be honest, apart from some experience, and that's about it. Uh, their worst loss is Scott Sorensen, I believe. I mean, Sharks have hardly lost anyone either. The Sharks haven't really made a big change from their 2020 squad onto now the 2021 squad. So Sharks haven't made any uh, big changes heading to this year. But the worst loss is probably Scott Sorensen. I think... You know, out of Cameron King, Jason Bakuya, the biggest loss is Scott Sorensen. That's the only th uh, three that they've lost this year. And I think Scott Sorensen is the biggest one because he's a versatile player that can play hooker, center, uh, in the halves, play in the back row, lock. He and off the, but I think he I think he's better off the bench because that's where he's more useful. 
But yeah, Cyrus is a big loss. He's obviously going to the Panthers for the 2021 season, which is a good pick up for Penrith. But a big loss for Pen, a uh, big loss for the Sharks, I believe. I think Cyrus has lots to offer, and I think losing him for the Sharks is a bit, a bit disappointing. I think he's a good player that definitely brings a lot. Can uh, definitely be a Mister Fixer for the Sharks. So losing him is a bit tough, I reckon, and that's their worst loss in my opinion. Uh, the player that needs to step up for the Sharks in 2021, I believe, is Andrew Fafita. Now, it's not Andrew Fafita that needs to step step up for the Sharks in 2021. I mean, you know, I think Matt Moyle needs to step up because if he can uh, get get rid of his injuries and all that, I think he needs to step up and have a big year. I think even Brendan Corey needs to step up step up a little bit if he wants to keep his back row side position. I even think maybe Blake Braley needs to step up a little bit. I mean, Blake Braley's obviously been the hooker for a while now, and I think he needs to step up maybe a little bit this year as well if the Sharks are to have any success. So there's a couple of players that need to step up, step up for the Sharks, but I think the bigger one is um, Andrew Fafita. Now, a couple of reasons why. Fafita, you know, he's an experienced player, a, lot, a, good, a really really good front row on his day, very experienced. He's won a grand final and all that, but, I mean, he just he can be a bit of a grub sometimes. Obviously, maybe him... Getting a bit distracted with uh, being a grub on the field, he just doesn't really focus on playing too much good footy. And apart from going to the field and being a bit of a pain to some other players on the opposite team, so that's got something. That's something he might have to stop. Might have to stop the Andrew Fafita. Uh, and look, he's. I think he's had a really good pre-season. Andrew, Andrew Fafita lost a lot of weight. He looks healthy. Looks happy. Looks fit. I think he's in for a big year personally, but that's just me. But I think he needs a lot to prove if he's going to have a good year at the Sharks. I think this is his make a make or break year because I think. Brand Hamlin Uel is definitely pushing him for free starting proposition. I think that if a feeder, if Andrew Fafita doesn't really have a good year this year, I think it's time for him to be dropped out of the team or just dropped to the bench and, and uh, Hamlin Uel to start prop if uh, Fafita fails to deliver. But, you know, that's a player that needs to step up for, step up for my Andrew Fafita. It's a big year for him, I reckon. Uh, ladder prediction for 2021 for the Sharks. I've got the Sharks 15th now. I'm sorry, Sharks fans. I think you guys will come 15th. I just think that... You have a good squad and all that, but I think that you're too inconsistent. I think John Morris is under a lot of pressure. I think that I don't know. I don't think John Morris will handle the pressure really well. I think we're going to see a very 2018 like uh, 2018 Parramatta Eels reflected on the 2021 Sharks. I think that you know Sharks. I think Parramatta in 2018 had a really decent squad, but obviously a lot of um, problems off field happened. A lot of um, Inconsistency. A lot of players just didn't turn up on the day, and I think that they'll be the exact same for the Sharks. But except Sharks won't come last or come fifteenth, in my opinion. I might be a complete idiot at the end of the year. The Shark, the Sharks go better than fifteenth because I think they have the potential to be better than fifteenth. Um, but yeah, I, I, that's just me. I think Sharks will come fifteenth. I think that this year won't be their greatest year, but we'll see how they go. And I think uh, Sharks will come fifteenth, and that's my prediction for the Sharks in twenty twenty one. But uh, yeah, that's my that's the end of the video. Hopefully, you enjoy. Please like, comment, and subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you later for my. Top five underrated players uh, heading to 2021, in my opinion. So, uh, see you then.